Psalms 27. Psalms 27. Let's go in our Bibles. Psalms 27. God is so good. He's so faithful. Psalms 27. This is our word verse. We've been looking at this all month long. Everyone say, I'm just going to stick with God. Because whenever you stick with God, there are perks. We've been talking about the perks to sticking with God. Let's read verse 13 and 14. They're going to put it up. This is from the message. I'm sure now. Say, I'm sure now. I'll see God's goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God. Say it. Say, stay with God. Take heart. Don't quit. I'll say it again. Stay with God. Now, we've been talking about staying with God means staying with what two things? Who can tell me what two things does it mean to stay with God? Yes, Zoe. The word and love. And I'm going to stick with God in my actions, in my attitude, and in my thoughts. Now, we've already talked about two perks. Remember, if I want a toy from McDonald's, what must I order? I must order a Happy Meal, right? Because a Happy Meal has the toy. So if I want a toy, I've got to order the Happy Meal. If I want the perks, then I have to stick with God. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm sticking with God. Now we talked about the first perk. Remember, who can tell me, where does this soccer ball go? Does it go in the basketball goal? If Jackson shows up to a game with a soccer ball and shoot shoots it in the basketball goal, is he going to get a point? No, he must put it in, where must he put it? In the goal, right? That's where it goes. Now, if he was, if he showed up to the basketball with the basketball, would he be throwing it through the field goal? No, where's he going to put it? If he wants to win, he's got to take a basketball and shoot it in the hoop. Good job, Jackson. Give it up for Jackson. Great job. It goes in the basketball goal. Listen, there is a perk. Everyone say a perk. A perk to sticking with God. And that's being in the right place. Everyone say being in the right place at the right time. The second perk that we talked about last night, who can tell me what it was? The second perk is instead of being insecure, I can be secure. I can be confident in God. It doesn't matter what I look like. It doesn't matter where I've come from. Sticking with God makes me secure. Now go in your Bibles really quick to Luke 10, 19. Go there fast. Luke 10, 19. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit under your breath. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit so you can receive the word. <laughs> Luke 10, 19. Look what it says. This is another perk. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to tell you what this perk is. Luke 10, 19. Behold, look what it says. This is such a good perk. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Say all the power of the enemy. And nothing, say nothing, shall by any means hurt you. This is the third perk. The third perk to sticking with God is authority. We just sang the song, you are my champion. I take my authority. And whenever we take our authority, what happens? We can do amazing. That's okay, what's going on? You have to what? Jaden has a warrant? Did you not pay those tickets? Oh my gosh. So you really, oh my gosh, Jaden, why didn't you pay the tickets? Did you pay the tickets, Jaden? Is this for real? Well, Jaden had said that she had some outstanding tickets. Now, I want you to notice what just happened. That police officer just came in and arrested Jaden. Why did she do that? She didn't do what she was supposed to. 
she didn't pay the tickets. Now, here's the thing. Could I stop that officer from arresting Jaden? No. Could y'all stop her? Why not? Why couldn't she be stopped? It's the law. She has the authority. She has the authority. Now, Jennifer and Jaden, y'all can come back in. Oh, we hear me that? Are they still out there? Jaden, Jennifer, come back in. Now, I want you to get Jennifer a mic. Officer Scheller. Give it up for Officer Scheller. Now, listen. Now, Officer Scheller, in the instance when something has transpired like that, what gives you the ability to do that, no questions asked? Obviously, if she was actually in the wrong, what gives you the ability to do that, no questions asked? So my, my badge of office gives me that authority yes. to enforce laws mm -hmm. and to make sure that people who disobey the law are held accountable for their actions. Okay, so what did you have to do in order to get that badge of authority? So I had to go to training. I mm -hmm. had to go to the police academy. I was yeah. there for four months. Mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of PT stuff, was physical training. Yeah. I had to memorize all the laws and ordinances. Yeah. And I have to be able to remember to do all of that stuff. I had to study. Right. And I have to be trustworthy. Yeah. I have to, people have to be able to trust mm -hmm. me, right, to make yeah. the right decisions and trust that I am doing my job. Right, doing your job. Thank you so much for You're giving welcome. us that example today. Give it up for Officer Scheller. We're so grateful. Jaden, you're free. Praise God, you're free. Never to be. Have you ever been actually arrested before? That was your first time. And there was nothing you could do. Y'all, here's the thing. This is a perk to sticking with God. I want y'all to listen. I want you to listen because the word's going forth. And listen, God is a God of order. Order. So pray in the Holy Spirit. If you're still receiving, you receive. But you receive in a way that's not a distraction. If it's a distraction, then do you think it's God? No. No, we don't want to be distracted. I want you to receive all that God has for you. But God is a God of order. And we don't want to be a distraction. So listen, God has given us authority. When I stick with God, what happens? I have authority. Now, Officer Jennifer, what did she do? She came in and she used her authority. No one could stop her. This is how you and I as believers, Luke 10, 19, look what it says. Behold, I give you all power over what? What do we have power over? To tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Here's the thing. The enemy should have no right in our life. What are some things that the enemy brings along? Willow. Just say it, baby. You're not going to get a mic. Just say it. Fear. What else? Sierra? Fear? <laughs> Zoe? Depression. Depression. Yeah, don't you know that's the opposite of what we're experiencing here tonight? Liam? Pride. Pride. What else does the enemy bring? True? Frustration, breathe. Sadness, Bra Bra Brandon, 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 Brandon. Strife, Strife. Anna. Smoking. Smoking, that's right. Zay, shame, so good. Maya, fear, Evie, sickness. These are things that I have authority over. When the enemy comes with any of those things, do I just let him take over? No, he doesn't have authority. I am just like that officer. I've been given a badge. And do you know what that badge is? That badge is the name of Jesus. I want us to go in our Bibles to Philippians 2, 9. Philippians 2, 9. Philippians 2, 9. We have been given the name of Jesus. That is our badge. Say, that's my badge. The name of Jesus is my badge of authority. I've been given the name of Jesus. Everyone just say that with me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Say, Jesus. 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 
See, that is my badge. See, Jennifer, Officer Jennifer was able to come in here and she was able to arrest Jaden. And if I tried to stop her, then I would have been arrested. If y'all tried, if she resisted, it would have been worse, right? She had the badge of authority. Do you know that every demonic force has to bow its knee to my badge of authority? We cannot be punked around by the enemy. We cannot be punked around by pride, frustration, fear, sickness, lack, and disease. When the enemy comes and tries to punk us around and tries to make us sick, tries to make us think that we're not good stuff, tries to make us think that we're worthless, that we're no good, we have to use our badge of authority. Do you think Officer Jennifer is intimidated? When someone's doing something wrong, do you think she's like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should get him or not. Do you think she's like that? Do you think she's like a little scared little chicken hiding in the corner? Just like whenever those guys put roosters in my backyard. The guys put two roosters in my backyard and guess what they did all night long? They cock a doodle dude. And I was so mad at those boys and so I got them back. But they put those roosters. I thought there was just one because little goes out to the backyard. Okay, she goes out there and she's like barking at the bush. And I'm like, what is actually going on? She's barking at the bush. I'm in the bathroom, but I hear in the backyard. So I grab my phone because it's dark out there. And I run out there and I put the light and I'm like, little, what are you barking at? And there's this huge rooster that's in my backyard. And I'm like, it's like, <laughs> like it's making these awful noises. And so I grab little and I go inside because I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. It was like four o'clock in the morning. I'm not dealing with this rooster tonight. So then I go to bed and little's freaking out. She wants to go outside. She wants to chase the rooster because she thinks she's a bird dog. She's not. She is a lap dog. So anyway, so finally I go to sleep, I keep waking up because guess what the rooster's doing out there? Like, it is not even sun up. Like, why is the rooster cock a doodling? So I go out there the next day, and of course, Little goes out there too. And Little chases that rooster all over the yard. And then Little chases the rooster down the little side, side wall area where the wall is in the house. It's like a little section, and there's a fence. So I'm, I'm, I run over there because I'm at the back porch. I see little choo, cut out and the rooster's like blah, 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 running away from little. And then I hear like, blah, 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 and I'm like, oh gosh, if that rooster touched my dog, I'm going to grab it by the neck and wring that rooster's neck off, right? I will go all postal on this rooster. Okay. Like don't mess with little. Okay, because the rooster was like bigger than Little. Like the rooster's standing like, it was this big and Little's like short. So Little's not even barking at it, she's just chasing it. So then I hear it making all this commotion, like flapping wings and so I go over there. The rooster is up on the fence. It jumped, it jumped up on the fence. It got its big body up on there. And so Little was like, okay, good, I'm done. And so then she turned around and you know how she walks all prissy. She walked back to me and I was like, okay, rooster. Jump on over, jump on over. And the rooster, and guess what it did? It jumped over and I was like, dear Lord, thank you, Jesus. Well, then the next day, someone was like, hey, where's, where's the black rooster? And I was like, there is no black rooster. Little scared off the rooster, there's no black rooster. And they were like, yeah, we put two in your backyard. And I was like, oh, you're funny, you're real funny. So I'm like, I don't see another one. So I went to that bush and that rooster had been hiding in the bush. A little black, it was a little bit littler. A little black rooster had been hiding in the bush. And I guess it was hiding so good that little didn't even smell it. It was like so still and so quiet, little didn't even smell it. But that rooster was hiding. Why do you think that rooster was hiding? It was scared. It didn't want to be chased out of the yard like little. Well, then the next day, guess what happened? One of, um, one of our neighbors who has Facebook, someone had posted about the rooster on Facebook because the rooster was like roaming the neighborhood. And they were like, someone better come get this rooster. And I was like, well, it ain't technically my rooster. It just happened to be in my backyard. But we caught the rooster and they're gone. But do you think Officer Jennifer hides like that little rooster when trouble comes? Why? Why doesn't Officer Jennifer hide when trouble comes? She has the authority. She's got the badge. She's got the badge. You and I, we can't cower 
when the enemy comes. Whenever friends make fun of us for believing what we believe, we can't go into hiding. That's the time where we rise up in our power and authority and use the name that we've been given. Look what it says in Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Look what it says. They're going to have it on the screen. You can look at it in your Bible. Therefore, God has highly exalted him, him being Jesus, and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above what? Every name. Say the name that is above every name. Say, I have authority. I've been given the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. And look what happens at the name of Jesus, that in that name, in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Can sickness stand against the authority you have in Jesus? Can lack stand against the authority that you have in Jesus? Can fear stand against the authority you have in Jesus? No, but guess what? Why are so many believers sad, depressed, lacking, sick? Why? They're not using their authority. And this is a perk. When I stick with God, I'm in the right place at the right time every time. I'm secure. I'm confident. And I have authority. Everyone say, I have authority. It goes on to say, and every tongue will confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. What is my badge of authority? It's the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. There's life in that name. There's health in that name. There's prosperity in that name. Let's say it again. Let's just say Jesus. Jesus. Just close your eyes and say Jesus. Picture Jesus. Some of y'all have already seen him. Say Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, see at that name, anything that was in en endeavoring to attack your life, guess what? It has to bow its knee. It has to stop. Can you go very far on your knees? No, no you can't. And sickness, lack, disease will not go far in your life. Fear of man, fear of failing, pride will not go far in your life. Do you know why? Because you're going to stand and take your place of authority and use the name of Jesus. Peter and John did that same thing. When they were faced with someone that was sick, they didn't say, oh, let me take you to the doctor. Let me see if we can get you healed at the doctor. Guess what they said? They used their badge of authority, which was the name of Jesus. Let's take a look at what happened when they used the name of Jesus. Stories of the Bible. Peter heals a beggar who can't walk. This is Peter. hey -o. Who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Peter told people about Jesus. Peter and John went to the temple to pray. As they neared the temple, a man who couldn't walk from the time he was born was being carried in. Each day, the man was put beside the temple gate so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When the man saw Peter and John, he asked them for some money. Please help. Peter said, look at us. The man looked up at them eagerly, thinking that they would give him some money, but Peter said, I don't have any money for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. Then Peter took the man by the hand and helped him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. Woohoo! He jumped up and began to walk, then walking, leaping, and praising God. Come on! He went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. Wait, is that? I think so. No. When they realized he was the man who couldn't walk who had been sitting outside the gate asking for money, they were absolutely amazed. Wow! Peter asked the people, what's so surprising about this? Why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own power? He reminded all of the people that it was God's power who healed this man and encouraged all of them to turn from their sins and follow God with their whole hearts. Now, I want you to notice, what did Peter and John say? They said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I'll give to you. Say, I will use my authority. I want you to think right now about one thing 
that you need to use your authority in. Maybe it's in your own personal life. Maybe it's in the life you need to speak the name of Jesus over somebody else. But that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to speak the name of Jesus. How many of you believe that the word works? How many of you believe that there's power in the name of Jesus? Well, because you believe it, we're going to put action to our faith and we're going to speak the name of Jesus. We're going to sing a song that says just that. I speak the name of Jesus. So I want everyone to close your eyes and I want you to picture that one thing that you need to speak the name of Jesus over. Maybe it's fear that's trying to get into your heart and mind. Maybe it's frustration about something going on at home. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's lack. Whatever it is, I want you to picture that thing. Everyone close your eyes and picture. What is that thing that you need to begin to speak the name of Jesus over? Because we're going to do it. And what happens? According to the word, when I speak the name of Jesus, what happens? Does that thing stick around? No, it has to go. 